But in the meantime, while the United States is still technically at peace, we thought it would be worth asking people who are calling for war if they have considered in detail what a war would mean for this country. Congresswoman Maria Salazar was gracious enough to accept our invitation to come on the show. We're grateful she did. She joins us tonight. Congresswoman, thanks so much for coming on. Of um, course. Thank you for inviting me. Well, yes. So since you have called for war with Russia, how do you think that war, once it begins, would play out? I think that's a hypothetical, a hypothetical question. I think that we should concentrate, Tucker, in what uh, Zelensky asked Congress today. Which is I'm, to sorry, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't. Uh, no, and I'm and I'm in no way um, trying to cut you off. I, but I, I can't let you elide okay. over that. You said we should shoot All down right. Russian planes. That's of course war. Since you've called well, for that, I you didn't are a member say of Congress. I think. Well, you okay, just said that on the tape that, we played. That, that was take, yeah, but that was taken out of context because I said, of course, that I know what that means. I was, that, that, that interview was not very well conducted, and that's why I'm here, because I want to clarify my position. Okay. Okay. And my position is that we should not take not the no-fly zone off the table. But before that, that's two. We need to do one. And one is to give Zelensky exactly what he's asking for. No right. troops on the ground. Let's give him the MiGs and the S-300, what he needs to defend his own air, uh, airspace. So he right. will create his, no, his own no-fly zone. And that's what I think we should have done months ago. It's embarrassing that this guy, this president, who is under the bullets, has come to Congress to beg for us to give him something that we should have done a long time ago. Okay. That's let, me my be let, let, let me be clear, when you say we should give President Zelensky what he's asking for, he demanded today, I think you were there, that the United States enforce the no-fly zone. But you, so you are for denying him that. Well, but he also said, and then we can give you alternatives. So since we know that that should not be taken off the table, and I repeat it, I do believe that we should go to plan A, which is to give them all the military weapons that he's asking okay. for. Okay. Because well, if I think we a lot of people sympathize with that. Let me just say, I think a lot of people who saw okay. President Zelensky's speech and today and who've seen the atrocities in Ukraine feel deep sympathy for the Ukrainian people and want this to end. I'm certainly among them. But I'm wondering I'm sure about the implications. So then I'm, I, I am asking well, you, let me, so let me then finish. what should we do? So okay, let, let me, all let right, me, so when, what should we do then? Always and everywhere, especially for the U.S. government or one of its elected representatives, act on behalf of the core interests of the United States government. It's really super simple. So if the United States is providing and let me, weapons... Let me just tell you well, now me, that let me you ask said you, that. Hold on. Okay. If the all United right. States is providing weapons to one side in a war, how is that not participating in the war? Listen, I do, let me just backtrack and say that you say that we're supposed to be representing the American people. I represent District Number 27, where you have millions of Cuban Americans, and I'm representing what we think. We know that we, we acquired peace through strength. Look at what happened in 1960. Mm -hmm. Fidel Castro and okay, JFK. Stop. I'm sorry. JFK I can't. Linked. I can't. I can't I'm not going to. I'm sorry. I'm not going to. I'm not going to take the anti-communist lecture from anybody because, of course, I agree with you. Uh, no, no, and by no. The way, I'm just I, saying that history. And I hope that, that you're history. not speaking for quote Cuban Americans, but for all Americans, because it's not a racial question. It's a question of, of I'm talking of about national my, interest. I'm representing right. District Number I understand. Twenty Seven. I, I understand. And we believe, but I'm just saying. Right, I got okay, it. And so. I'm, I'm as against communism, I think, as anybody. But my question is, if we are providing weapons to one side in a war. I think it's fair to ask, maybe the other side would say that's an act of war against us. And if that happens, then what next? And to not think about that seems negligent, but since you're on the Foreign Affairs Committee, I know that you have thought it through. So tell me your views on what would happen next. Tucker, we have been providing javelins and stingers and ammunition, and we're providing a lot of, of military armament. So what is the difference between that and the MiGs and the S-300s? What's the difference? I mean, Putin, you have to understand that we okay. are, unfortunately, the United States has fallen into the Vladimir Putin's trap. He is the one dictating what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. He said, we do not want, we, we are imposing a no-fly zone over Ukraine, and we but are So we're letting Putin behind. control our behavior. Okay, so that seems like, that seems like a lot. Are. Right there. Right. Okay. But let me just ask you, because we believe we don't need to have more evidence that Putin has bad intent, that he's evil. A lot of people believe he's crazy, including some informed people, including many Russians. So we know he's volatile and we know that he's heavily. How many nuclear weapons, by the way, does Russia have? Do you know? Many. 
many. Yeah, only about 6, one is enough. Is the guess. One is enough, that, and that's a fair, one that's a fair answer. One is enough. So are we right? concerned at all that he might use a nuclear weapon against the United States. Is that a concern? Is that something that you consider as you recommend these of, of, of policies? Of course. We're, we are, of course that we're very concerned. And we're also concerned that he may be throwing a biological weapon against the Ukrainians within the next few hours because he cannot take Kiev or Kiev as he thought he was going to. So of course that we are in, in confronting a dictator. And it, but, but I think that we should put this into context. And I thank you very much that you're giving me the opportunity. Of course. If we believe in the free world, that this is just going to be the first or the last confrontation with a bad actor, we're in for a very big surprise. Because if but, but, we do not confront bad actors with strength, then we're going to have China and Russia and Iran and Fidel and you and okay. Venezuela okay, and Nicaragua. Well, you're but, watching but, hold what on, we're hold doing. On. But, but if, and, and if, needless to say, I've made that argument, you know, for 30 years on television. The question is, are we doing it with all available risks known to the population in whose name we're doing it. So I'm asking you, what do you think the chances are, and I'm sure you've gained this out as a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, that Putin uses nuclear weapon against the United States in response to this? What would you calculate the chances He of? can sure that we are taking that into consideration. And but but what do you think the likely, I mean, obvious? our viewers are, I'm sure, supporting you. I think most conservatives are on your side. and But I just think they should know what the informed view of the likelihood of a retaliatory, retaliatory nuclear strike from Vladimir Putin is. What, do, what, what would you assess it as being? And I repeat, that's a hypothetical question. And I well, believe a hypothetical. that he will, not, he will not take that step if, starting today, the Biden administration will send the message that we are in charge, that NATO is ready to confront him, and so are we. And that is the problem that I believe, I'm not sure if you share in my view, that you obtain peace, you obtain, this, you can, you can, uh, 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 take the, they take the, all the power away from Putin if you show strength. To put okay, so, so do you believe that, terms. do you believe, do you believe that's true? So President Zelensky said yesterday that he is considering declaring that Ukraine would not join NATO in exchange for having Russian troops withdraw from his country. Would you describe, this is President Zelensky speaking, would you describe that Zelensky as... Zelensky can, who am I to say what's correct and what's would incorrect? Would you accept, would you, well, Zelensky. I don't know, you, okay. I so, am going, so, but no, no, wait a minute, hold on, please don't dodge the question. Is him. that, is Damn. that, would that be an answer you'd be satisfied with? If Zelensky made good on what he just suggested, that we'll agree to neutrality, we'll relinquish claims to Crimea, and the Russians leave, would that be okay with you? Would you consider that an honorable ac exit, or would you consider it a display of weakness? If Zelensky comes to the United States Congress and he says that this is the best path forward, we are no one to say something to the contrary. But I don't think he's going to say that. So we're, we're creating scenarios here that are hypothetical. No, no, we're not. He, he himself, I mean, you may not be following this closely, but he has said that multiple times. So, of course, that and I outcome understand would, and I have that would spare and the that deaths is up to of, him. Okay, but that would spare the deaths, and since I know you have great concern for the civilian population of Ukraine, that would spare course, the deaths we'll do. of untold thousands and preserve the capital city from being destroyed. So would that be better than increasing the level of armed conflict in Ukraine? Which would be a that's better for, outcome? That's for the Ukrainians. What do you mean? Decide. You're... you're you're an American policymaker who's imposing your views on Ukraine, and I'm asking you simply, would that be a better... I am not why not, imposing why not any views. Push, well, let me, well, of course you are. You're saying we need to send materiel, billions of dollars, arm the military, and I'm not criticizing yes. your position. I'm just asking you, has it occurred that many lives might be saved if we were to encourage the, the peaceful solution that's already on the table? Are you doing anything in that direction? If the Ukrainians want to go that route, they have the right to, and we are no one to say anything about it because they are the ones dying on the streets, and they're the Would ones you, under but, and They uh, certainly being are. They certainly are dying. That's right. I don't no, Listen, notice any members I of Congress that, or David Frum I, laying I down their lives. To. It's the Ukrainians. But think, have you, I, have I you suggested have, that? Tucker, I think that we have... Uh, we have talked about this point enough. I also wanted you to give me the opportunity oh, to explain to you. <laughs>